for a three body diagram shown in the figure four forces are applied x and y directions what additional force must be in the positive axis so that the net acceleration of the body is equal to zero so uh, see this question what do you think what do you think this question is basically based on or 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 or, or, or you know uh, what in your opinion uh, is the question uh, trying to test on your knowledge is, 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 should it be considered from loss of motion no well ideally not just because the question is based on acceleration doesn't mean this question comes from loss of motion what do you think it is yeah this is actually a very basic very basic question on the loss of on the loss of vector on the loss of vector addition okay and to, to, to be more precise actually vector a plus minus vector b which is actually equal to vector a minus vector b so what does it mean it means that difference of two vectors is actually the addition of one vector to the opposite of the other okay why did i say this you will um, get to know it after solving the question all right now coming to the question so what i've done is i've taken four forces here instead of seven five eight and six i have labeled them as f1 f2 f3 and f4 and I've chosen this as a reference, reference axis, which means I'll use this axis to label to uh, quantify the magnitude, or to, sorry, to quantify the uh, direction of these forces. So F2 is acting towards right. It is acting towards right. Therefore, F2 would be taken as positive. F4 is acting towards left, and therefore F4 would be taken as negative. Fy is going upwards, sorry, F, uh, F1, uh, sigma Fy would be result of F1 and F3. F1 is moving upwards, so it will be taken as positive. F3 is acting downwards, and downward coming forces will be taken as negative, so it will be plus F1, F3, right? Now, what is sigma Fx now? Sigma Fx is plus F2, which is plus into, what is F2? F2 is 5 Newton, minus, minus. What is F4? F4 is 6 Newton. So this becomes plus 5 minus 9, which is actually minus, minus 1. Similarly, what is sigma Fy? Fy is plus F1. What is F1? F1 is over here, 7 Newton. So it is plus 7 minus, minus F3, which is 8, minus 8 is equal to minus, minus 1 Newton, right? So sigma Fx and sigma Fy are both negative. Sigma Fx and sigma Fy are both negative. If sigma Fx and sigma Fy... Let me write it one more time. Sigma Fx is minus 1 Newton and Sigma Fy is also minus 1 Newton. Since both of them are negative, they will occupy the, since both of them are negative, they will occupy the third quadrant, right? They will occupy the third quadrant, which means this system of force can now be replaced by a new system wherein I can consider, instead of taking F1, F2, F3, my bad, F1, F2, F3, and F4, instead of taking F1, F2, F3, and F4, what can I do? The resultant of F1, F2, F3, and F4, where is F4? Look at this F4, right? And F4, which actually is, which actually is nothing but sigma Fx and sigma Fy. Now, how did this system turn into this? Because sigma Fx is negative, so this is negative x. Sigma Fy is negative, so this is negative 1. Well, well, to put this more precisely, I would say sigma fx is actually minus 1 i cap. And what is sigma fy? It is minus 1 j cap. Right? So, so that's what's happening here. Anyway, anyway. Now let's see if we have two forces and what is the angle between them? The angle between them is 90 degree, right? The angle between them is 90 degree. And if we have two forces which are acting at an angle of 90 degree between each other, then what is the resultant between of these forces? Resultant is actually equal to root of fx square plus fy square. To be more precise, in this case, it is root of sigma fxy square plus sigma fy square, right? Now, what is sigma fx square? It is minus 1 square. Now, what is sigma fy square? It is minus 1 square. Therefore, what is R is equal to? R is equal to root of 1 square plus 1 square, which is root of 1 plus 1, 2, which is R is equal to root 2 Newton, right? Now, if I were to explain this a bit further, so we had a force like this, right? 
and also like this. Now, instead of these two, we can replace this entire force by one resultant, right? Resultant of what? Resultant of sigma fx and sigma fy, which means now these two forces can be discarded and instead this complete system can be represented as resultant of F sigma fx and sigma fy. But it is given that the net acceleration on the body is equal to zero. If net acceleration on the body is equal to zero, I can multiply by m on both sides. What I get is m into net acceleration is equal to zero, which implies m into a net is equal to zero. Or in other words, f, which is equal to ma, is equal to zero, right? Now, if f is equal to zero, what does it mean? It means that it means that sum of all the forces acting here must be equal to zero. Or in other words, if there is plus 1 Newton, right? So say, say for example, if F net is equal to 0, if there is 1 Newton acting on the system, what will be the, what, what will be, what should be the other force so that the net force is equal to 0? It should be minus 1. If there is plus 15 Newton acting on, on the system, then minus 15 should be, you know, acting in the counterpart direction to make it 0. If there is plus X acting on the system, then minus X will be required to make it 0. If it is plus R, the only force on the system, then if the system has to be in equilibrium, then we have to say that minus R will be acting in the opposite direction to make it zero, right? But here, we are not talking about magnitude, we are talking about vectors which has direction as well. In which case, in which case, if vector A is the only vector acting in the system, and if this has to be in equilibrium, then I can say that, or if the net force acting is zero, then we can say that, vector a plus minus vector a would give us zero. This is what I was referring to, the point said earlier that subtraction of two vectors is nothing but addition of one vector to the opposite of other. In this case, we have resultant vector here. In which case, we can say that this entire system will be in equilibrium only if we have an vector which is equal to the magnitude, which means this vector here would be magnitude of vector r, but is in the but is in the opposite direction. Right? I hope that is clear. So this is the vector. And and what will be the what will be the direction? See, this was actually the x-axis, right? This was actually the x-axis. And therefore, what is this angle? This angle is equal to 45 degree y because because if you consider this to be x-axis and y-axis the resultant was a root 2 Newton which is actually acting at acting at 45 degrees and therefore when you take the negative r it also will be acting at it will also be acting at 45 degree with respect to the x-axis so 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 the required forces the resultant in the negative direction acting at theta is equal to theta is equal to 45 degree with magnitude of r being r being root 2 root 2 newton now let us see the options so the correct option here is root 2 newton acting at 45 degrees okay now now, now maybe we can do one more thing if you want to uh, write down uh, in the in the pure vector form what will you what will you write this what will you write this vector as so resultant of sigma fx sigma fy is actually minus 1i cap minus 1j cap right in which case what is minus r my both of the vectors what is minus r minus half negative of this which is plus i cap plus 1j cap right so instead of writing here minus r instead of writing a minus r I can write this vector as plus 1i plus 1j acting at an angle theta is equal to 45.